side patches on hats have come a long way. They've evolved from just being a way to commemorate a uh, team accomplishment, uh, an anniversary, or hosting an all-star game. Getting to the postseason, going far into the postseason, maybe even getting to the World Series and winning it all. Side patches usually would be on the left side before 2016 and just slap it on a on-field hat. Pretty classic. Looks great. And that's it. But with new trends in hat collecting on fitted hats, you see side patches are used to complement and become a new part of the anatomy of the hat that makes the hat collector decide which hat to get and which hat not to get. That you see the, the patches complementing the hat color itself, complementing the underbrim or the logo itself. I mean, it's not just fitted hats, but it's even on dad hats that you see these side patches doing what they do to complement the whole design of the hat, that it all works together. And, of course, it's the trend of the underbrim colors, but the side patches bring back and hearken the days of what they used to wear on the field. It kind of brings back the principle, the foundation of what most hat collectors say when they are asked, why do you wear fitted hats? It's because that's what the players wear. Even though they might be black nasties. But this is everyone else's way of keeping in style and keeping that tradition of what the players wear in their collection. So in today's video, so in today's video, I'm going to talk about a topic no other hat channel has talked about. That everyone talks about side patches and what looks good, what doesn't look good. But I'm going to go over you in class today. What is the best side patch for your team? I'm going to go through all 30 teams. With the exception of maybe three, maybe four teams. I've selected two for Otherwise, I'm going to go through the one single best definitive side patch for your team. So if you want to find out which side patch is best for your team, I suggest you stick around, get out a notebook, pen, or pencil, and find out. Because class, I can't do it for a while with one hand. Class is in session. Let's go. Let's go over the rules the rubric, I'm going to grade and select the definitive side patch for each MLB team. First of all, it has to be a worn on the field. You've seen it before, it can't just be a thing that like, oh, like it was a uniform patch that they wore in their jersey, but it wasn't on their hat ever. I mean, I've seen Harry Carey side patches before on sleeves of jerseys, but I've never seen it on a hat before. So as cool as it would be, can't do that kind of patch. Second, can't be a postseason side patch. These are pretty generic and bland, usually, and a lot of other teams have the same kind of side patch. So, postseason side patches are out, but World Series side patches are in play. Another aspect is that it has to be team oriented. That I've seen side patches for Derek Jeter's last season, Marion Rivera's last season, or for Hank Aaron's 715th home run. Any side patches that are player oriented or kind of city oriented, not gonna go there. It either has to be a side patch that commemorates a anniversary of the team, the stadium, an all-star game selection, or that they've participated and or won a World Series title. Another aspect of grading and selecting these side patches is between what looks cool and what means more to the team. What's the sen sentimentality to it? It might be a cool looking side patch, but that one event that that side patch represents, that has a lot of hi team history behind it. That means a lot more than what looks cool. So. Those are going to be two aspects I'm going to be using to make the selections. Now that you know how I'm going to make my selections 
the boundaries and the rules and all that. We're going to go starting with the American League in this video and then the National League in the next video. Let's begin with the American League East. Alright, let's get it out of the way. Let's talk about the Evil Empire. For the Yankees, I don't have any Yankee hats. Good. But I copped out. I went with two side patches. They're they're an old team. They've been around for about 100-ish years. And they're a very successful team, too. They're an infamous team. And famous at the same time. So, for the Yankees, of course, I had a goes two side patches. One of them being an all-star game. For the side patch, it's the 2008 all-star game side patch. It was the last season of Old Yankee Stadium, the house that Babe Ruth built. I attended a game there with my family on a summer vacation, I think it was back in 08, in this last season. And it was cool to be there in history that I've been to Wrigley, Fenway, and Old Yankee Stadium. With this side patch, it has a very simple oval shape, but it has pinstripes inside about the uniforms, that connection, and especially with that white fencing on the top of the oval that resembles the fencing on top of Yankee Stadium, the old and new. Very iconic. Just as iconic as the Ivy is in Wrigley. The green monster is in Fenway. Or the hill, the little mound, and out in the center field in Minute Maid Park, or McCovey Cove in AT&T Park in San Francisco. It's very iconic. It's simple, that it has the oval shape, but it has that iconic look to it, with just a little fencing on top. I love it. The second Yankee side patch, 1999 World Series. This is a very famous side patch. The World Series was a big titan matchup between the Braves that had a huge pitching armada rotation and the Yankee that had a armada themselves of batters. Uh, this has been a very famous side patch that's been used with hack club, with lids, with my exclusive fitted, Sports World 165. Uh, very famous side patch and it was between this and then the 75th anniversary World Series side patch, uh, but that one just too big. Uh, I felt like this one, the diamond shape, more concise and it's just more famous. I think. Red Sox. So this one was. This one I'm gonna do just one for. Most of the other teams are gonna do one for, unless I say otherwise. Now this one was really tough to pick between the two famous side patches that you had the all-star game of the century, pretty much. With Ted Williams in the, the golf cart, going around Fenway, and having such an all-star lineup in the 99 all-star game, but breaking the curse of the Bambino. The 2004 World Series side patch, this one has more meaning to Red Sox, that they broke an 86 year curse of not winning a World Series. Took you guys under a century to break a curse. Must be nice. But this one is very simple. A lot of World Series side patches might be generic, but this one looks nice, it's clean, but more importantly, it means more to the team that they broke the curse. And, and for me, it means more that they broke the curse, and in the process, they beat the St. Louis Cardinals. For me, this side patch means more, especially uh, how they got to this appearance in the World Series and winning it, that they were down 3 nothing against the Yankees, the powerhouse Yankees, in the American League Championship Series, and came back to win, down 3 nothing, and then beat the St. Louis Cardinals in the World Series. That's huge! So, 2004 World Series side patch, Boston Red Sox. The Tampa Bay baseball team, because I, I would say Rays, but this side patch commemorates the Devil Rays. 
It's the 1998 inaugural season size patch for the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. This is a very cool side patch. I like that it's kind of futuristic. Future. It with the design and the colors that are used, like it's like the angle inaugural season 1998 and this like the idea of futuristic color palette of like the cool colors going from the purple into the blue and the green which is an ever so slight touch of yellow the rate the double ray that's being used in the side patch very detailed and just everything about it seems 90s futuristic like if you're in 1998 you're thinking yeah, this is from the future. This is from like 2008. That's like that far in the future. So that's why I like this side patch. For the Toronto Blue Jays, this one I actually have here. This one, the 1993 World Series. This one was the last World Series before the players strike in 94. So this was a pretty big game that it also featured Joe Carter's walk-off home run in game six. Uh, I want to say they played the Phillies, but maybe I'm wrong. But the infamous call of, touch them all, Joe. You'll never have a bigger home run in your career, in your life. So this one, I like. It also is a generic kind of looking World Series logo, the 92. 93, 90, what would have been 94, 95, I think 96, maybe, and I think 97 as well, use a similar design, the same design, but just changed the year. But that's fine. I mean, it's still detailed enough and still looks great. And I love that they have that continuity. And of course, paired up with this logo, one of the top five baseball logos in all time history. The last team in the American League East, I got the Baltimore Orioles, and for them, I picked the 1993 All-Star Game side patch. There was a video I had seen recently where they talked about the importance of Camden Yards opening up back in the early 90s. It bucked the trend of these toilet bowl dual purpose stadiums back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s where you'd have stadiums that were either complete circles and just be boring and wouldn't make dimensional sense and or they would double as baseball and football fields and if you see what the Oakland A's are dealing with the last how many years now and they are trying to leave for the umpteenth time again yeah Camden Yards was hailed as a engineering titan of progress that it brought back the comfort and the focus of the baseball field and it was a marvel at the time and I picked the 93 and I picked the 93 all-star side patch it's pretty simple I like it but of course for that meaning and for Ken Griffey Jr. to hit the warehouse across from Camden Yards during the home run derby I'm pretty sure he broke one of the windows. Anything that has to do with Ken Griffey Jr., that's a win. That's important. So, 93, also again, Orioles. We're gonna start with the Cleveland Indian. For a long time, I've had this list actually for quite a while now. And for the longest time, I thought I had the Indians side patch figured out, but I went back recently and said, you know, Cleveland has a very unique museum, has a very unique institute in the city that celebrates music, celebrates rock and roll, and they made a side patch out of it. The 2019 off white game side patch looked so cool. I don't know why I overlooked it at the beginning. I was originally going to say the 95 or 97 World Series side patch, which they lost in both cases I don't know why I would do that but having the guitar as the patch and then using the wording 
kind of as the, the neck or the guitar symbol. Very ingenious. Cleveland has the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I was there one time, we were passing through uh, for a family vacation, saw all of the guitars that are painted different styles and colors out on the, the uh, patio or the uh, in, in a park area and just very cool. Iconic to Cleveland. I, I liked it, so I'm gonna go with that one. Detroit Tigers. There's not a whole lot actually that of side patches that I could uh, really choose from. There are some generic ones like the World Series, I think it was from 81 maybe. Um, just kind of boring. I, mean, I, I could have gone with the World Series from 2012 that they got swept in by the Giants. But I went with something that meant a lot more to them. I went with the side patch for the Tiger Stadium final season. From 1912 to 1999, Tiger Stadium was the home of the Detroit Tigers. It was one of the longest standing stadiums in America at the time that it was around in 99. You had Yankee, the old Yankee Stadium from I think it was like 28 it was built. Uh, or in the late 20s. Wrigley Field was built in 1914 and Fenway Park was built in 1912 as well. Uh, those last two stadiums are still standing of those four I mentioned. And for this side patch to commemorate Old Tiger Stadium, my parents always talk about Old Tiger Stadium being so iconic and so old. And in the side patch to have the street sign where it's on the corner of where it's located and Michigan and Trumbull that's really, that means a whole lot that you put that they put the details for the street corner. Just like with Wrigley, it's Addison and Clark. So if, if Wrigley's to ever do a final season side patch, not gonna happen, they would do something like this because this, this is really good. Kansas City Royals, Wall Street game from 2012. I've seen Kauffman Stadium from afar. I remember being in a hotel in Kansas City, uh, like a, not even a mile away from Arrowhead and Kauffman Stadium where the Chiefs and the Royals play on a vacation. Seeing across, seeing that big center field iconic scoreboard in that pentagon shape, kind of like home plate shape, just taller. And for it to be kind of Embolized and used here kind of like a fanfare kind of feel with the banners all over and the crown on the top That's royalty right there Very cool. Uh, nice stadium. Uh, I wish I Went in there, but they weren't playing at the time that we had visited uh, Actually, the funny part is that it was 2011 that we went through Kansas City and that was the All-Star Game in Arizona. And it was the next year that they would have been in Kauffman. So we were just a year late. For the Twins, it's kind of tough because they do have some good side patches. They don't have a lot, but of what they do have, they're good. But I'm gonna go with the 1965 All-Star Game side patch that shows the, the two guys there in the state of Minnesota shape outline. It just and it's got the M and the FTP for Minneapolis and St. Paul, the the twin cities there. That's why they have the TC. Uh, spoiler for anyone that didn't know that. I think it's really cool that you can incorporate a state shape into a side patch and make it look good because not a lot of states you can make look good. okay. Yes, for Denver, for Colorado, it, that's that's a little bit too easy. Anyways, but I like this a lot that they were able to use the state outline and use the, the two guys inside the side patch. For the Chicago White Sox, it could have been easy to go with an all-star game. Because all-star game side patches seem to be very unique to the team, to the city. But looking at the 2003 all-star game side patch, it's... I know it's iconic, but I like the design a little bit better of the 2005 World Series side patch for the White Sox 
number one side patch. It also meant a lot more, I think, that they broke they broke a long curse too. It was it was a long time. 80 some years as well, almost 90 at that point. I think it was 88 years. Anyways, they had a, it wasn't just breaking the curse. It was also a fantastic run. They swept the Astros in the National League at the time, and of course the Astros have learned from that loss that they need to cheat to win a World Series at that point. So they didn't have smart watches to learn how to read signs and communicate and bang on drums back then. So it's, I had to throw in my Astros cheating jab, you know. But I still think that the 05 World Series side patch is very cool looking. A lot of gold being used. And even though it's generic, I like it. it. Looks really good. And it was one of the first side patches, side patch hats that I got with the color underbrim, the pink underbrim, back in early 2020. For the Oakland A's, 1972 World Series side patch. This one, it, it kind of feels generic, but at the same time, it's just just the A's though. That it's not like a World Series side patch like we saw with the 2005 White Sox, where the logo was probably made beforehand just to be generic for either team, kind of be unbiased and neutral. But this one, I like it. It's nothing too fancy though, but it's simple to make it work. A's side patch, and I've seen this being used by a lot of uh, prominent hat collectors out there in the hat community for their Instagram or Facebook profile picture using this side patch as their profile picture. So, I like it. We'll go with that one. Texas Rangers, 1995 All-Star Game side patch. Now, All-Star Game. A lot of teams try to incorporate a star into the logo of their All-Star game sometimes. Because it's like, hey, All-Star, and we'll incorporate the shape. But more often they try to incorporate their logo or their stadium into that All-Star side patch emblem. For the Rangers, the star is part of their logo, part of the name, that Texas Rangers, their sheriffs and they wear a star badge, so this makes perfect sense. It's symmetrical, it is pretty simple, but it's it works so well. I'm gonna go with the 95 All-Star Game side patch for the Rangers, and I have a bad feeling that in 2023, we're gonna see the Rangers have a All-Star Game side patch again. Because they have a fancy new stadium, and why not? Because MLB hates Wrigley Field, because they haven't hosted since 1990. For the Los Angeles Angels, or Anaheim Angels, or California Angels, or the, the Angels in that one place, I'm going to go with this one, the 50th anniversary side patch. I was, I'm going to give a, give a very close second to the 2010, 2010 All-Star Game side patch, but I like the 50th anniversary logo. It has the Angels logo in it. It has the 5-0. It has a halo over it. It's in a nice ribbon logo shape. I like it a little bit more with the design, how simplistic and symmetrical it is. Now, speaking of the Angels, I meant to clarify earlier in the intro how I was going to select the side patches, talking about that it's a, a team-oriented side patch, like it's celebrating an anniversary of a team. Now, for me, <clears throat> an anniversary should celebrate 10, 25, 50, 75, 100 years, 150, we've gotten to that with the Braves recently in the Cincinnati Reds, maybe 125, and then 200. That's really about it. I don't like the idea of having a 
35th anniversary or a 40th anniversary or a 60th anniversary or a 15th or a 20th anniversary patch. White Sox did a 95th anniversary side patch one time. If it's not one of those big numbers, then I, I don't like the idea of it. It's stupid. But it's not to say that some of those side patches look good. Like these last two hats, like the one that I'm wearing, the 30th anniversary of the Seattle Mariners. This one it has that same ribbon shape, like the 50th anniversary of the Angels hat. And this one incorporates kind of a skyline of Seattle. Has the hills, has a mountain in the background, Mount Helena, has the Space Needle in the background, towering over everything. It is very Seattle, and the shape around it is great. That's what I like about it. We're gonna go with that one. The 2001 All-Star Game side patch was a close second, but the 30th anniversary was better. Now, we're gonna wrap up here. Just as stupid as celebrating his 35th anniversary is, like the Angels did, with this side patch, this is the worst side patch, worst anniversary logo I've ever seen. It is unsymmetrical. It is so eyesoring. It celebrates 35 years? Why, why is such a weird number? And then you see here with the Houston Astros celebrating 45 years? You couldn't wait for a good logo for 50th? What'd you got for 45? Well, damn. That looks really good. Here, I went with a 45th anniversary side patch. The idea of 45 is stupid, but this design is so incredible. It has the cascading colors of the warm colors, the oranges, the yellows, the reds, that harken back to the older Astro colors, the retro. It has the star down there, the red one that they use when they're in the National League Central Division for a long time, the rustic red when they wore it with the black. And just the state of Texas also being in there, the navy color, and the ribbon kind of metal looking shape like you've seen with the Mariners and the Angels shape. That's really good looking. It's really good looking. Again, as stupid as celebrating 45 years is, they at least did it in style. So, good for them, I guess. All right, that is going to wrap up the top side patches for every American League team. If you are a super fan of the Angels, of the Astros, or of the Tigers, or the Twins, or the Blue Jays, the Yankees, the Red Sox. Let me know if I got them wrong. Did I get it right? Did I get it wrong? Was I so close that I mentioned one thing that I should have mentioned I didn't, or what? Let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on my definitive top side patch hat for every American League team. Please, let me know in the comments down below. Don't just skip over the like and the dislike button who gives a shit? Go straight to the comments. Let me know what you think about the list here. And we'll discuss it. Ronnie points if you do leave a comment. Participation points do count. So we're going to take a little break here. I'm going to see you after recess. We're going to get into the National League teams. The definitive side pad for every National League team. So... Class is not dismissed. We're just taking recess. And recess starts...